stealth camping in a Walmart parking lot. So yeah, this is going to be our classy campsite for the night. The EcoFlow Wave 2 air conditioner and heating unit. So Noel's making us some lunch right here in the back of the van and it's kind of hot out today. So this thing is blowing out 60 degree air. Morning. So, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you will definitely recognize the spot that I'm currently camped in. So we are just outside of Zion National Park on this uh, on this BLM campsite pullout. There's a bunch of other campers here as well, but there's some pretty spectacular views of this entire valley, and then Zion is directly over there. But if you haven't watched my channel before, maybe this is your first video. My name's Ryan. I live out of the back of my van full time alone usually, but today my girlfriend flew out to visit me. So she's, uh, she's traveling with me for the next two weeks or something like that. And about two months ago, I started a video series where I was going on the longest road trip in the world from Key West all the way up to Alaska. And I had to postpone it because of the weather and it just wasn't going to be fun driving up all the way to Alaska earlier this year when everything was going to be covered in snow. And if you recognize this spot, this is the exact spot that I postponed that trip up to Alaska. And this is the exact spot where we're going to start it back up again. But if you'll notice, I have one more thing that'll help me be prepared for Alaska. And that's on top of my van and it is Starlink. And we set it up last night, tried it out, actually got some pretty good internet speeds on it. I was pretty surprised. We were watching TikToks and I actually uploaded uh, an entire video on my Starlink. So that was pretty cool. But now it is time to take it down and then head out of here. There we go. It's actually a pretty simple setup. Also, if you guys couldn't tell, I started the morning off with a little bit of a outdoor bathroom break somewhere out in that field, which is just something you're gonna need to do every once in a while. If you ever plan on living in a van. And we're actually only 20 minutes outside of the park at the spot, so that's nice. And both of us have already been into this park and done most of the hikes. And we didn't get the lottery for Angel's Landing and the Narrows are closed, which were two of the hikes that we really wanted to do. And so instead of stopping here and doing any of the hikes that we've already done once, we're just gonna drive through, taking the views, and then kind of head over to Bryce Canyon. So I don't even think we're gonna get out of the car, except to maybe get some lunch. Hello. How's it going? That's good. Made it in. Zion is also a super small canyon, so it's only like a five mile drive to get through the whole thing. Yeah, so if you can see the river, it's really pumping down there. So that's why the uh, the narrows are closed today because the water is flowing too fast, so it'd be too dangerous. It's almost like a flash flood down there. So kind of unfortunate. I guess that's what happens when you get record snowpacks all over the mountain ranges down here. Still nice to be able to drive through and see it. Oh wait, what? This is the exit. All right, so we're coming up pretty much on the uh, exit tunnel here, and there's not a lot of places to stop. But once we get up there, there should be some good viewpoints. <clears throat> so typically when you come to Zion. They have roads that are closed down to normal car traffic, and then they have roads that are open to normal car traffic. And the roads that are closed to normal car traffic, there's a shuttle system that constantly rides through the park that you have to take in order to see those parts. So we weren't able to go down those roads, which kind of go down back that way. But there's still some pretty good views on this road, and then we still get to drive through the uh, historic tunnel. I'm gonna pull off right here and check out the views a little bit before we head out.
So I just pulled up the road that kind of winds up the mountain up there to exit Zion from the other side. But it is hot out here and summer is starting, which means it's only gonna get hotter. So I figured I'd take the time while we're parked up here to thank this video sponsor. And that would be this thing right here, the EcoFlow Wave 2 air conditioner and heating unit. So Noel's making us some lunch right here and it's kind of hot out today. So this thing is blowing out 60 degree air, keeping her nice and cool while she's working hard. And this thing is actually pretty great. It has a detachable eight hour battery that you can hook onto the bottom of this thing. So if I didn't have it plugged into the wall, I could have it anywhere in the van with this battery and it would run and keep us cool or hot because it also has a heat pump in there for up to eight hours. So it hasn't been too hot recently, so I haven't had the chance to use this a bunch, but I've used it a few times when it's got to 80 or 90 degrees in the van. And it's the first air conditioning unit that I've actually ever used that will cool down the entirety of my van, not just the point that I'm standing, but it cools off the entire van and keeps me nice and cool when I'm hanging back here in the middle of the summer. And also this thing is super portable and actually pretty light. I can lift it up. I keep it in the back of the van over there. So it's super small, super compact. Doesn't really take up a lot of space. And if you're like me and you live in the back of your van or you do RV trips or you're planning to do a camping trip in the summer and you want to stay cool, the best place to go where you can get some pretty good deals on the EcoFlow Wave 2 and a bunch of other products is ePowerGo, who I will link in the description of this video. And if you use promo code Ryan, you actually get a 5% discount. So definitely go check them out and get yourself a portable air conditioning unit. But now I think it's time to enjoy these views with this nice breakfast slash lunch that Noel made for me. Thanks for making it. Delicious bagel sandwich. So I think once we finish lunch up here, we're gonna hop back in the van, make our way over to Bryce, kind of hit two national parks in one day since they're so close. All right, let's get out of here. Onward to Bryce Canyon. Not that far from Zion, it was only like two hours, so it's really not bad, it's only two o'clock. And Bryce Canyon is also a pretty small national park, but I will say, I think it might be one of my favorites, if not top two national parks that I've been to, and I've been to a lot of national parks. It's just such a crazy looking, like alien landscape. Very excited to be back. Prairie dog crossing. All right, so we got lucky here. Some guy pulling out right as we're pulling in. Let's go check out some hoodoos. All right, so Noel's putting, pulling out snacks, and we got these at the uh, Marathon Expo as like a little snack pack, and they have blown up to be like fully pressurized from all of the different elevation changes we've gone through. It's like little pillows. All right, so we went to the general store and I actually found out that they have showers in there, and we were trying to figure out if we wanted to do a long hike, because between here and where we're going tonight, there's not really any place for us to shower, but I think if we do a long hike today, we might just go in there. Also, got myself a little Bryce Glizzy that Noel is stealing from me. Watch your children, Noel's. Truly though, I think walking out here for the first time is one of the most insane things to see. It looks like you're walking out to a completely different planet. Like, look at that. It is so crazy. And you can hike down in between these little gullies down here which is I think what we're gonna do. But when I say hoodoos, these little things right down here, those are hoodoos and that's what I'm talking about. So I was reading about this park and this little uh, pamphlet they give you when you come in and apparently these hoodoos aren't caused by rainwater. It's because of the strong fluctuations of temperatures in this valley, causing the water to seep into cracks, freeze, and then break off and create these little hoodoo-like structures, or at least that's what the pamphlet says.
right, so as you can see, getting a little bit of snow up here. We drove about another 1,500 feet up, maybe 2,000 more feet to this uh, final viewpoint here in Bryce Canyon. Made ourselves some coffee. And I think this is the final spot that we're gonna stop on our little visit here in Bryce Canyon. So this is called uh, Natural Bridge. According to this little sign here, it has been misnamed because it's actually not a bridge and is in fact an arch. Because natural bridges are formed by rushing streams and as you can tell, we are on the side of a uh, kind of cliff here. So this was not formed by a stream. So interesting fact, it has also gotten at least 20 degrees colder way cloudier and uh as you can see there's snow it's also a bit windier um, but we did make the decision since we did that hike we're gonna go uh take showers down at that visitor center down there also up here there is like 10 times more snow than there was down there and i was peppered by it it's crazy how much elevation can change the weather Oof. and clearly white is not my color i've spilled all over my shirt today Oh crap, can you put the coffee machine away? Whoopsies, left the coffee maker out. Good thing I've got my little minion with me. Hold this please. Thanks, Knowles. No problem. So the only reason that we're coming here to shower, but normally we would go to a Planet Fitness or something is because we're gonna be traveling around the desert for the next seven or eight days where there aren't any Planet Fitnesses and the only option is really to take a uh, van shower or an outdoor shower. So we're just trying to take advantage of actual showers while we can. All right, so Noel's going to pack our shower bags and I'm gonna go in and grab some tokens for the showers. And also, as you can see, blue skies down here at this lower elevation and not as cold. Let's make you cry. Hey, how Hi. you doing? Can I just get some uh, tokens for the shower? Of course you can. Okay, I'll do four. Four tokens. Yes, please. All right, so um, I got four tokens. Each one is eight minutes. I could have got two, but I just figured to play it safe and get each of us two. So we have 16 minutes, minutes. yeah. Right. <laughs> Showers. Wait, do it again. <laughs> All right, good luck. See you on the other side. Definitely giving some prison shower vibes, but not bad. So I'll see you guys once I'm done. All right, shower completed. That's something that I've uh, learned about van life is always take advantage of stuff like this because you never know when you're gonna get another one, AKA a toilet, shower, throwing away trash, filling up water, whenever you can, you should, even if you don't need to, just because it makes life a lot easier and less stressful, but I'm gonna head back to the van now, wait for Noelle to finish her shower, because she's still in there and then we're heading out of here, and I think we're gonna camp at a Walmart parking lot tonight, so. Although van life does afford us a lot of opportunities to go travel and see a lot of beautiful places, sometimes that means spending the night in a Walmart parking lot. Also, that was actually a uh, pretty nice shower. The only thing that kind of sucked about it was when I went and opened my shampoo bottle, it was pressurized from all of the uh, different elevation changes we've made over the last two or three hours, and I opened it up and it just like kind of sprayed on the wall, which kind of sucked, but. Other than that, nice and warm, actually pretty clean showers. All right, so while I was waiting for Noelle to get back from the bathroom, which she is obviously back from now, I ran into the store, grabbed some snacks, and now we're hitting the road to our lovely Walmart campsite. For us, it's about an hour and a half drive. For you guys, we're just gonna teleport there. All right, so quick pit stop. Noelle's still in the car. We're about halfway to this uh, Walmart that we're going to, but I drove past this sign that said, childhood home of Butch Cassidy. So I had to stop by and check it out. And for those of you who don't know, Butch Cassidy was an American train and bank robber back in the late 1800s and was the leader of an outlaw gang called the uh, Wild Bunch. And this is where he used to live. So I guess you only drive by these kind of spots like once or twice. It's freezing out, but I figured I might as well stop. Noel didn't want to get out because it was cold, but that's Butch Cassidy right there. And then these are kind of his accomplices. And then this is like an old reward thing that they put out for him. This is, uh, I guess, where he lived. I guess we can head in and see. A little bit creepy coming in here by myself, but very humble beginnings. Little dinner table over there. Oven. There's the man himself. You can't see him in the glare. A bed. Not bad, honestly. I wouldn't mind living here. Walking out to this every day. Pretty sweet digs. 
I just figured we were stopping by, so I wanted to show you guys. Um, but I'm getting back on the road, so I will check in with you guys when we get to Walmart. All right, we have made it to the most majestic Walmart I've ever seen in my life. Mountains surrounding us on all sides. Um, it's not the biggest Walmart, also not the biggest town. I've been here a couple times before, but we've got some friends here this time. A couple other RVs and what looks like a bunch of families that are camping out in this parking lot as well. So we are going to go join our friends in the super fun pastime that I call stealth camping in a Walmart parking lot. So yeah, this is going to be our classy campsite for the night. You excited? Mm-hmm. Nice. But before we head back in the back and get kind of settled in, we're gonna run inside and use the facilities. We just got back from going into Walmart and realized that the meat that we were gonna make taco bowls with for dinner tonight is still in the freezer and is rock solid. So Noelle is going to be in here prepping all the ingredients that aren't frozen and I'm gonna let her film it and I'm gonna run into the store and grab the non-frozen meat to use. Bye. Did you guys know that there's male and female peppers? This one has four and this one has three and that means something, but I forget what it means, but the more you know. How's it going? It's good. Nice. Got some good footage. All right, first things first, we gotta get some water boiling for the rice. And then this next step is pretty simple. Throw everything in the pan, let it cook. First up, meat tube. Nice. It looks like that water is starting to boil, so we'll add our rice. Now that the meat's a little bit cooked up, throw in these veggies that Noel prepared, some corn, and black beans. There we go. I think that looks just about done. Dinner is served. Hit it with a little rice base, and then some of our taco fajita mix on top. This table's just barely big enough for two, but that's it. Cheers. I think that's uh, pretty much it for this video. Probably just gonna finish this dinner and then hang out in the van tonight, maybe watch a movie. And then we gotta wake up early tomorrow to continue on our two week van life adventure. So as always, I truly appreciate you guys watching. It really does mean the world to me. If you like this video or you like this channel and maybe just haven't yet, think about subscribing. It really does help out. And I will catch you guys next time.